What's up, YouTube? This is Two Raw Four TV. All right. So before I get into this video, I want to give a shot to the brother Tony for the donation to the channel. Donations uh, to the channel via the Cash App. Much respect to you for showing love to Two Raw for TV, aka Two Raw Four Sports. All right. So if I say, you know. Um, LeBron James is, the, in many people's eyes at least, the greatest small forward of all time. Um, th there's going to be some backlash to that. And, and the main guy that pops up as far as backlash, as far as some people saying, well, I don't agree with that, they'll say that they think it's Larry Bird. Now, if you're talking longevity... And resume, LeBron has a case. If you're talking as a basketball player skill-wise, I think it's Bird. I just think Bird was a better basketball player. But if you ask the question, who's the greatest power forward of all time? Well, the name that tends to pop up more than any other name it's Tim Duncan. There might be a few that say Carmelo. There may be a, a sprinkle that may say other various names. Kevin McHale, Charles Barkley. Uh, maybe even Dirk or Garnett. But the main guy that tends to pop up more than anybody else is Tim Duncan. And I say all of this to ask you this. Why is it that is just so automatic that LeBron is either the quote GOAT or top two but Tim Duncan's not in this conversation at all I mean not at all I mean let's just look at something here when you look at LeBron's resume it is exceptional four time NBA champion Four-time NBA Finals MVP. Four times uh, League MVP. 19 times NBA All-Star. Three times NBA All-Star Game MVP. 13-time All-NBA First Team. Three-time All-NBA Second Team. Three-time All-NBA Third Team. Five times NBA All-Defensive First Team. One uh, All-Defensive Second Team. He was Rookie of the Year on the Rookie all all rookie first team, won the scoring championship one year, won the assist title one year. He's on the 75th anniversary team. He, um, I don't know if I want to read the rest of these actors, but I'm going to read them anyway. Associated Press Athlete of the Year, uh, four times. Associated Press Athlete of the Decade, three times Sports Illustrated Sports Person of the Year, USA Basketball Male Athlete of the Year. Two times National High School Player of the Year, McDonald's All American Game MVP, two time First Team Parade All American, three times Ohio Mr. Basketball, and is number 23 retired by the St. Vincent St. Mary High School. I mean, that's almost that's about as extensive a resume as you're going to find, just about with few exceptions as far as NBA players. But when you look at Tim Duncan's, I know I include some college and high school stuff with Tim Duncan, but when you look at Tim Duncan's, um, it's not bad. Five-time NBA champion, three-time NBA Finals MVP, two-time NBA League MVP, 15-time All-Star, 2000 All-Star Game MVP, a co-MVP, I think it was him and Kevin Garnett, I think, that year. 10-time All-NBA First Team, 3-time All-NBA Second Team, 2-time All-NBA Third Team, 8-time All-Defensive First Team, 7-time All-Defensive Second Team, 98 Rookie of the Year, 98 All-Rookie First Team, NBA Teammate of the Year, number 21 retired by the Spurs, USA Basketball Male Athlete of the Year, Sports Illustrated Sportsman of the Year, IBM Award, 
75th anniversary team, consensus National College Player of the Year, two-time consensus first-team All-American, Chip Hilton Player of the Year, NCAA Rebounding Leader, three-time NABC Defensive Player of the Year, ACC Athlete of the Year, <coughs> two-time ACC Player of the Year, three-time first-team All-ACC, number 21 retired by Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Now, let's look at their first 10 years in the NBA. First 10 years, 2003 to 2013, LeBron James averaged 27.6 points per game, 7.3 rebounds, 6.9 assists, 1.7 steals, 0 0.8 blocks, 49% shooting from the floor, 34 Three, I'll say 34% shooting from downtown and 75% from the charity strike. And during that time period, LeBron had won three NBA championships. Three. Tim Duncan, during that time period, the first 10 years from 1997 to 2007, 21.8 points, 11.9 rebounds, 3.2 assists, 2.5 blocks, 51% shooting from the floor. Uh, they didn't shoot threes, big men, so that's a negligible stat. And 68% from the foul line. It has to be noted, too, though, that Tim Duncan played in the system. And since he played in the system, it affected his numbers a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, popular system, you're not going to have one guy who wants to shoot the ball 20-some times a night. I think that's why DeJounte Murray, you know, those types of players, they don't get along very well with Pop. All right? And during that time period, Tim Duncan won himself, I believe, four championships. Four. In the NBA Finals... Tim Duncan has a 2-1 advantage <clears throat> over LeBron James. And it would have been 3 nothing, And Tim would have six titles had it not been for Ray Allen. Ray Allen saved LeBron James from having, instead of a 4-6 and six finals record, a 3-7 and seven finals record. So when you look at their games, let's, I mean, how, how do we... They're not the same player. They don't play the same positions. Um, how, how do you judge? Well, I guess you could say LeBron has been the more dominant player. But the problem in saying that is um, Tim played in a system. And I do believe Tim in his prime was very capable of being a 30 and 12 guy. But he just, you know, for in the popular system, you had to sacrifice your numbers for the, the team. It was a, it was a team oriented system. Um, defense, the edge goes to Tim Duncan. Rebounding, Tim Duncan. Shot blocking, Tim Duncan. Shooting, uh, I mean, if you're talking about outside shooting, LeBron James, obviously. Um, Mid-range, I mean, Tim Duncan is a traditional big, so that's not necessarily his forte, though he could knock down the open mid-range jumper. I guess you give it to LeBron by default, even though LeBron was not a great mid-range shooter. And the paint, Tim Duncan... Um, Passing LeBron, athleticism LeBron, uh, ball handling LeBron, leadership. <sighs> Me personally, Tim Duncan. Um, LeBron had to go to other teams, or he had and has had to because he's still playing to benefit from the advantages of playing with other great players. You know, everybody keeps talking about, 
Michael never won with Scotty, uh, without Scotty. Michael never won anything without Scotty, which is one of the stupidest talking points. I'm glad every spear is brought by this. It's one of the most re- redundant, stupid, ignorant talking points. It's like saying, well, Bird never won without Mikhail. Well, actually, yeah, 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 no, he didn't. Bird never won without Mikhail, or Magna never won without Cap. Well, LeBron's never won without, when I think about it, LeBron's never won without another top 75 player. Has he? So what do you, so what's your point? And yeah, okay, he didn't do it with one guy, but that's because he team hops. He's either had to have a Dwayne Wade or he's had to have an Anthony Davis to win. When he was in Cleveland trying to create something there the first time, he failed. Now, the only reason, in my opinion, why Kyrie Irving isn't on that list. So technically you could say, well, he did win in Cleveland. Ah, yeah, and, you know, that, that was the only finals where a significant guy had a suspension. And we all know Kyrie Irving is a real legitimate top 75 player, but they didn't put him in there because they want to have LeBron have the talking point of, oh, where there's a top 75 guy that he uh, won a championship without. That's BS. Kyrie Irving is a top 75 player. Come on, let's be honest. If he's not a top 75 player then why the fuck are the Lakers so interested in getting him? It's like, when people keep trying to tell me that Jamal Murray is not a real all-star. But anyway, um, at the end of the day, you need talent to win. You're going to need another great player to win. But anyway, you know, but, but, you know, back to this original point I'm trying to make, though. Why is Tim Duncan not talked about more as, forget a top 10 player, top 5 player? I mean, he, he won five championships. He only lost one time in the finals. And that was a series that went seven games. And I strongly believe if Tim Duncan hadn't, you know, ran out of gas because he was on the downside of his career at that point, had he not ran out of gas, had Manu Ginobili not forgotten what team he was playing on, because remember that game, I think Manu had like eight turnovers. Had these unfortunate things not happened, Tim would probably have six championships. And that's game seven. If Ray Allen doesn't hit that three, then we're talking six titles. We're talking a 6-0 and finals record for the Spurs. But, you know, be it as it may, Tim Duncan has five championships. And and it's like nobody really gives the Spurs that respect because it's a small market. And the Spurs were winning these titles. <clears throat> the Spurs were winning these titles and competing in, in my opinion, the most competitive Conference, uh, Western Conference in in the history of the Western Conference, the two thousands into the early two thousand teens, right, late nineties, two thousands, two thousand teens, where the bulk of LeBron's championship runs were coming in some of the weakest and then the weakest era in the Eastern Conference. Can you name me a dominant team after the Boston Celtics and Pistons fell apart? Who was LeBron competing against? The Raptors with DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry? Uh, The Pacers with PG-13? The Hawks? So, yeah, I think this is a I don't think this is a far-fetched question. Is Tim Duncan arguably, if not 
greater than LeBron James, is he at least in the same conversation? But anyway, tell me what you guys think.